The first most difficult rich girl to woo is Sun Pinglin, a graduate of the best medical academy. Miss Sun from the Sun family, blonde with light skin type, a girl looking really rich with various jewelry and stylish clothes. The second alien who just returned to Earth. Shi Ming Jing, the daughter of a murderer, no dowry, suddenly got a billion dollars. A girl who stands out with eyes as blue as the ocean and hair as white as snow. In fact, these two girls are both relatives. The star prison is a very beautiful place as there are many beautiful shining stars around it that light the way. But at the same time, it is a place for prisoners, and inside it is not as beautiful as it was outside. Shi Ming Jing is one of the inmates in this prison. She lies down without strength and calls her mom. The girl is very exhausted and upset. She remembers her mom. The blue-haired girl suddenly gathered courage and shouted to be let go because it wasn't her fault. One of the watchmen shouted at the girl to shut up, and the other said that the evidence pointed to her, so she should not even dare to deny her guilt. And now she got up but the girl only shouted louder that she had not killed him. The girl fell to her knees in hysterics. While she continues to be held tightly so that she cannot escape, she continues to scream that she did not kill him and is not responsible for his death, with bitter tears dripping down her cheeks. Then, on the other side of the bars, Song Ping Lan approaches her, saying that she really saw the girl kill him and she should not argue because no one will believe her. The girl made a slightly arrogant face and said, How can she be innocent if there is so much evidence against her? And if she is still pretending, why is she not guilty? Sure Yao is so arrogant. The public learned the extraordinary news that Sun Pinglin had accused the famous family's daughter-in-law of murder, and tens of billions in property were in the Sun family's pockets. The Song family became rich overnight, and the troubled Shi Yao was sentenced to death. And during her imprisonment, she gave birth to a daughter. She also faced depression. A girl noticed that her mom was not feeling well and was coughing a lot. She went up to her mom and started calling her, being very worried about her condition, after which the girl started asking one of the prison guards to take her mom to a doctor because she was very sick. But he just waved his hand aggressively and shouted that she was a disgrace and let her mom die so he wouldn't have to get his hands dirty. This caused a storm of incomprehension, frustration, and at the same time aggression in the girl. She grabbed her small hands on the bars and began to cry pitifully. The girl moved closer to her ailing mother and screamed that they were all bastards and let them be damned for not even being able to help her. Morning news. Shi Ming Jing, Shi Yao's daughter, is not a prisoner, but is being held in a star prison. This has caused a stir in the world. The government is going to acquit her on all counts. At the same time as the girl is crying and beating her fist against the prison wall, she promises her mom that as soon as she can get out of here, she will definitely avenge her, and she will return everything that belongs to them and never let them go. The observation center, the hospital. The girl went there. People are looking at the girl and discussing her. They say she has only recently come out of prison and already a high-profile person. What is she doing on the blue star? The girl is considered very pretty, but they regret that she is the daughter of a murderer. The girl is looking at a piece of paper, thinking that she needs a health certificate to get out of jail, but it's such a hassle when she notices a woman with a child. She overhears a woman talking on the phone and learns that she has been told that it is an open fracture and needs to be completely amputated. Otherwise, the consequences could be terrible. And then Shi Mingjin notices a boy with a wound on his knee next to her. She thinks to herself that she didn't even know that the medical care in Blue Star was so bad. And then she hears again that it's life-threatening, and if they delay, it would be dangerous to amputate her leg. Shi Mingjin took a closer look at the child and realized that he was just like her after all. The child's face shows great excitement. It is very hard for him to hear all those words coming from his grandmother's phone. The woman learns that the child can be taken in and treated without any problem with the participation of Sun's family. However, this will be done for a reason. In exchange for the treatment, the child's father will have to marry Song Pinglan. The woman says she will think about the proposal. After hearing about the Sun family, she notices that she is hearing about this family again. It seems that nothing here is without the involvement of these influential people. Soon after the conversation, the child tries to cheer up the grandmother, whose tears begin to flow.
The child assures that he is not afraid of amputation, emphasizing that he is telling the truth. The woman, having calmed down a bit, rises from her chair and asks her grandson to wait while she goes to the doctor to discuss the treatment of her leg. The child finally asks her not to worry. However, when the woman leaves, the boy's expression changes dramatically. The words about amputation no longer seem harmless and easy, and the child's knees shake. He looks at his legs again and tears start to flow from his eyes. He realizes that he is scared, and now he doesn't want to have an amputation at all. The boy's anxiety is noticed by C. She comes to the kid while he gathers his thoughts, and leaning over to him, the girl says that his face is full of tears. The girl asks why he is crying because he is a man. These words hurt the child, and he irritatedly tells C to stop crying. C continues with saying that he's just a baby, and if he needs to cry, it's okay. But the boy disagrees and retorts that the girl just doesn't understand anything. According to the child, he is hesitant to show his tears to his grandmother because she is already old, and it might hurt her health. On top of that, this behavior may encourage the grandmother to agree to the Sun family's proposal. Throwing a brief glance at his grandmother, who at that moment was talking to the doctor, the boy repeats that he will not bother the old lady, because she is in poor health. He is convinced that his father should only be with his mother. Even though the boy has never seen his mother, he believes his father's words that his mother will come back to them. After saying that, she thought for a moment. She knelt down and began to feel the boy's leg, searching for the source of the pain. This behavior bothers the boy. He says that if the girl is going to sell him, she won't get paid much, because his leg will be amputated and he will be a marriageable loser. The boy's words revive C. She replies that in that case it would be simple to kidnap the baby. The boy panics and says that his father would never allow it. Sai continues and says that kidnapping is scary, but his father is being forced to get married. That means the child will soon have a stepmother, and that's much worse than being kidnapped by her. The boy says that his father is not going to get married. Then Sai slaps him sharply and forcefully on the wound on his leg, causing him to jump up in his chair. Afterward, the toddler's leg is pierced by a sharp pain. He screams for the entire hospital and security guards run to him. The men who came running to the scream ask the young gentleman what happened to him. The boy lowers his head and orders them to kill the bad woman next to him. The surprised guards say there is no one near him. The child raises his head and does not find C beside him. He looks around in surprise at the spot where the girl had just been standing. At the same time, the guards are surprised to notice that the wound on the boy's leg has miraculously healed. His leg is now completely healthy. In surprise, the kid touches his head and realizes that along with the injury to his leg, the dragon horns disappear as well. The guards also notice that the horns have disappeared. They ask the boy how he is feeling and he says he is fine now. A grandmother comes out to them and asks if her grandson is really healed. The boy says it's true and he was healed by a bad woman. The grandmother takes the child in her arms. The guards are discussing what happened. None of them saw anyone near the boy. All they know is that according to the boy, he was cured by a girl. They ask if it was Song Pinglin, but the boy says back that it wasn't her. There's a plot on TV with C offering rich men to take her in marriage. The boy points his grandmother at the TV with the words that she is the girl who healed him. The guards don't believe the baby's words. They are sure that she could not heal him since she had just left prison, where no one would have taught her such amazing medicine. But the boy confidently declares that she is now his woman, and he was not wrong in his choice. She has healed him and he must repay her. The grandmother leans over to her grandson and says that he is still quite young to get married. Then the boy with a satisfied face says that if he can't, it's up to his father to marry. People are lined up in the central square in front of the main Blue Star radio station, waiting for the news. The sound of the broadcast is interrupted by the roar of airplane engines flying over the square. The big screen anchorwoman announces the big news. There is a man who is willing to marry Shi. Mo Yinhe is the man Sun Pinglan wants to marry. Shi also sees the news. She is confused by the news because she doesn't even know who Mo is. Shi heads to Grandpa Su's estate. At this time, there is a quarrel inside its posh walls. Grandpa Su gets heated and berates the guys for not reacting in any way and not helping C deal with all the dirt that's being poured on her on TV. However, Grandpa's words don't impress the guys at all. Su Dashao replies that he will never marry Xi 
Despite any threats from his grandfather, Su Ershao doesn't mind becoming a groom, but in that case, he promises his grandfather to make the girl's life a living hell. The last of the brothers, Su San Shao, with bitterness in his eyes, agrees to be nothing more than a friend to the girl. Grandpa is not at all happy with these answers, and promises to kick the brothers out of the house if one of them doesn't marry Si. The brothers recall that Mo Yinhe has already publicly announced his intention to marry Shi. They hope that the presence of a rival will cool Grandpa Su's ardor. The grandfather is also not impressed by the presence of an official candidate. He repeats that Grandpa Shi once helped their family, so now it is their duty to help the girl. Si enters the room. She is flooded with memories of how many good things Grandpa Su had done for her. After all, he was the one who paid a lot of money to bring C.I. back to the Blue Star. The girl asks not to force any of her brothers to marry her, assuring them that she does not need them because she can stand up for herself. C.'s words are cut short by the same boy from the hospital. He calls C. a bad woman and the girl turns around. The boy says that she did not fulfill her promise because she promised to kidnap him and left without saying goodbye. Without further ado, the boy declares that C is now his favorite woman and hugs her. C is shocked. She didn't expect this from the boy at all. It made her embarrassed and blush. The child's grandmother greets the grandfather, asking how he is doing. Puzzled Grandpa Sue asks the woman to explain to him what is going on here. She hands him a business card with the address of his villa and tells him that this address was given to them by the TV channel when they asked about C's whereabouts. Looking at the card, Grandpa looked up at the woman again and asked her excitedly if it was true that her son wanted to marry Sai. However, he is answered by a boy who assures him that it is he, not his father, who wants to marry Sai, but is not yet old enough to marry. Si leans over to the kid with a smile and says that they are related. That's why she helped him in the hospital. But her goal wasn't marriage, to which the boy replies that since they are related, the girl will get married. She realizes that her plans have changed significantly. All she wanted was to thwart Song Pinglin's plans, and now she has attracted too much unnecessary attention. In the end, she decides that there's not much cause for alarm, and she still manages to prevent Song Pinglin's marriage. Xiaobai's grandmother says that the boy is very worried about the flood of filth that she is getting on the internet. This attitude towards his savior makes him furious. The grandmother then adds that she could use her son Mo's influence to whitewash herself. And when all the passions subside, they can simply say that she and Mo were at odds. This way, they will thank she for her help, and the girl will have a good reputation. Sue's grandfather enters the conversation, saying that nothing has been decided yet, and promises that Sai will marry one of his grandchildren. Xiao protests, starting an argument with his grandfather. The adult tells him that Xiao doesn't understand anything about marriage and has no idea what a wife is. The boy declares with a confident look that he knows exactly what a wife is. He clutches C's dress and looking into the eyes of all present, declares that a wife is a woman whom a man wants to protect for the rest of his life. Xiao says she wants to protect Xi for the rest of her life and won't trust her to anyone else. Grandpa Su doesn't take Xiao's words seriously as they seem too boyish and naive. He asks Si to talk some sense into him because he can't do it himself. The girl takes him by the cheek and tells the baby that he is too young, but promises that she can wait until the boy is older. The boy's words hurt his grandfather's expectations. Grandma chuckles, saying it's only a matter of time. While the grandparents are watching the cute situation, in Xi's head a perfect plan is being made, and the main means of realizing it becomes the boy Xiao. The girl decides to use Xiao Bai as a shield to thwart Grandpa Su's plans for her marriage. At the same time, she can use Xiao as a way to mess with the Song family. Since Mo is the same man that Song Pinglan tried to marry, she decides that this arrangement would be a great way to piss off her rival's family. Xiao calls his father who is at home in his study. The son says he has good news, and soon his father, Prince Mo of the Atlantean Empire, will see his daughter-in-law. The words about his sister-in-law came as news to Mo. However, his brother Ye Shen, who was sitting next to him, says that Xiao impersonated Mo, and now their wedding is being discussed all over the internet. Ye Shen adds that Xi is quite beautiful, but Mo abruptly interrupts his brother with the words that his wife is not dead. He convinces Ye Shen that all is not yet lost, and she can come back. This doesn't have the proper effect, and Ye Shen says that Mo has to accept reality, 
since his wife has been gone for five whole years. Mo replies that his wife isn't dead and he doesn't know anything. The man is flooded with past memories. Mo recalls the day when his wife handed his son to him, saying that when he grew up, she would come back. At that time, Xiao Bai was an ordinary egg, not a newborn in diapers. Ye Shen tries to reason logically and asks the question, if Mo's wife is not dead, then why did she leave her son and husband alone? Mo says his wife told him she would come back when Xiao Bai grows up. The boy is now four and a half years old, which means her return is very close. Ye Shen doesn't back down. He thinks that his wife just didn't want to hurt Mo and lied. If she comes back soon, it may be because of the hype surrounding Mo and Shi's wedding, not because of her past promise. This does not please Mo at all, and he becomes enraged. However, at this point, the man starts coughing and spits out blood. Brother Mo asks for forgiveness and says he didn't mean to let his brother get sick again. At this moment, Xiao Bai enters the study and greets his father. Then, with the words that he has brought his fiancée with him, Xiao shows the girl. Mo looks up at the doorway and sees Si there. The girl stands timidly, and something about her catches Mo's attention. Xi walks over to Mo and they look at each other. The girl looks at Mo, remembering that Song Ping Lan wants to marry him. Apparently, she's not impressed with him. Mo also takes a closer look at the girl. He looks at her with hopeful eyes, but when he takes a closer look at Shar, he realizes that she is not his wife. Mo has another bout of severe coughing again. Xiao Bai tries to help his father. Mo leans on the table, covering his mouth with his other hand. Ye Shen urgently dials Sun's number and reports another coughing fit. He is told that if Mo doesn't marry Sun Pinglin, he won't be treated and hangs up. The handset hangs up. Xiao and Ye Shen stand helplessly watching the coughing Mo and don't know what to do. At that moment, she approaches Mo. The girl takes his hand and asks him not to move. She runs her fingers over Mo's wrist. The man is puzzled and asks what she is doing. Meanwhile, she moves from Mo's wrist to his forehead. This time, however, the girl puts a long needle of unknown purpose on Mo's forehead. Seeing this treatment, Mo grabs the girl's hand, stopping her and asks what she's going to do. She asks Mo to trust her. Xiao Bai intervenes, taking Xi's side and asking her father to trust her and let go of her hand because the girl is in pain. After pondering for a bit, Mo eventually lets go of Xi's hand, trusting the girl and Xiao Bai's entreaties. The girl then continues and asks Mo for some patience. Not a few moments later, the girl says, That's it. Much to the surprise of everyone present, including Mo himself. And Ye Shen says that Mo has stopped coughing. Mo notes that Si has really gotten over it, and the old disease has been suppressed by the dominant force. Mo also notes that his breathing is more even now. With a satisfied face, Xiao Bai tells his father that his girlfriend is indeed gorgeous. Also, he adds that although she helped his father, he didn't allow him to be with her. These words cause Mo to be annoyed. The girl herself stands aside, watching the argument between father and son, and not daring to get involved. She glanced at Mo, noting that he had a handsome face, high status and lots of money, so it was no wonder Song Pinglin was trying so hard to marry him. The only thing that confuses Zi is that Mo is sick. Father, having finished arguing with Xiao Bai, approaches Xi, chewing her out for watching their quarrel. However, this does not embarrass Sai in any way. She tells Mo without further ado that she estimates that he's been sick for four or five years, adding that she's only suppressed the cough temporarily, and it will take three to four months to fully heal. After saying that, Ye Shen was stunned. The very possibility of curing his brother seems impossible to him, as he has never believed in it. He approaches Zi, asking what she means and whether Mo can be cured. Sai replies that the disease can be cured, but is surprised to ask what is so difficult about it. Ye Shen recalls that they've already spent five years looking for a cure, and so far all they can do is only slow down the process. Gaining courage, Ye Shen asks incredulously how she knows about medicine if she's from a prison planet. Shi Mingjin says that she learned about it from a prisoner, because there are many interesting things in the cells. You can learn even in the most interesting details, and in the prison itself, a lot of different people. They knew a lot and shared with her. They liked to teach the girl. Among them was the elder brother of the old man's son, the sage of poisonous medicine. The guy began to pull the girl, shaking him from side to side, saying that he had known Sun's family for a long time, and it would be great if the lady would take on his brother's treatment. 
he would pay all the necessary expenses, including her services. The girl said that she doesn't need to pay for her services. She's willing to help for nothing. But at the same time, she's a little embarrassed by the guy's attention to her medical skills. And she knows that she won't give Song Pinglan a chance to marry Mo Yinhe and won't let her family move up the ladder. The girl crossed her arms on her chest and told Mr. Mo that she would be able to cure him in just a few months, or rather three months, which made the guy smile and asked, Really? Shi Mingjin asks if he doesn't trust her and doesn't believe in her strength, and then suggests that he give her a week's time to show what she can do. She'll make him stop coughing up blood in a week, but she has one condition before she does. His brother thought about how dare she put any conditions on it now. If she says she wants to marry his brother too, there will be a huge conflict between her and Song Ping Lan. Mr. Mo asked about the condition and learned that it was about false news on the internet. Shi Mingjing said that she hoped Mr. Mo would clarify it as soon as possible. After all, it would be good for both of them. After that, the girl paused for a while and said that she had a lover and she did not want him to have wrong, false ideas about her. Ever since she was a little girl, there was someone in her memory. She doesn't know who it was and she can't say exactly what he looked like, but he asked her not to forget about herself. Mr. Mo realized that it was too simple. While Xiao Boy excitedly shouted that she already had a man she loved, then added that this man was him, while people on the internet thought that his daddy was her boyfriend. But they needed to clarify the fact that Ji Mingjin was his woman. The little boy hugged her leg tightly while saying these words. Mr. Mo said that he understood her well, and he said that Miss Shi was just a benefactor of the family, and there was no illegal relationship between them. Zi Mingjing clarified one more thing. Since she had just come from the prison planet, she would not refuse a new place to stay. After all, she had just returned from there, and now she had no place to live at all. At these words, the boy hugged her harder and said that she could sleep with him. He was willing to give her a bed. The butler was asked to take the girl to a cabin near the main building, to which the butler bowed and politely agreed to do so. Mr. Mo stopped her and said, Let the girl show what she can do this week, otherwise he won't leave her here. To which she smiled and told Mr. Mo not to worry, because the result will please him. Little Xiaobai is angry that his woman's room is so small for her. It's uncomfortable. How could it happen? Is his father jealous that the baby has a daughter-in-law? But he does not have one, so he wants to spoil their relationship in such a way. The girl asks the child not to make fun of her, because it would be indecent if she and his father would live together. But Xiaobai only asked her what could be indecent, and she replied, What bride would want to live with the relatives of her future husband? And the boy just said that she should not worry, because he will protect her at all costs. The girl was very surprised. Why the baby called her baby? And he replied that he cannot always call her a grown woman, especially because his father also calls her sometimes baby. The child very often heard it. When the father was talking in his sleep, he repeated constantly, baby, baby. The girl thought about it. That Mr. Mo Yin He looks like a cold person, but is he really a loving person? The boy says his name, Ye Xiao Bai, is also very interesting because his mom's surname is Bai Bai. His dad misses her and remembers her in the morning and evening. It is very cute and makes the baby smile widely. He said that Shi Ming Jing can call him Bai Bai Baby from now on. The girl understood about Bai, but decided to ask if his father's surname was Mo. The boy explained that his father's name in the register was Ye Shi Chao, and Mo Ying Be was his real name, and the girl asked him how he lived with two names, and whether it was not difficult to have two names at once. The boy is lying on the bed and turns to the girl, calling her baby, asking if she needs someone to warm her bed tonight. And she replies that she can do the job just fine on her own. Xiao Bai was offended. He puffed up his cheeks and lay on the couch in resentment. Suddenly a brilliant idea came to him. The boy said he had done it. He showed his horns and asked the girl, still calling her baby, if she was sure she didn't need anyone else. Xiao Bai laughed heartily in front of the girl. Such an open and sincere reaction confused she. She slightly distanced herself from the boy and gained a worried expression on her face. A confused she noticed that Xiao was so open to her that he wasn't afraid to show off his dragon horns in front of her, even though it was very rare and unsafe. The thing is that dragon horns are very sensitive and should not be touched just like that. Just touching a dragon's horns can cause a secondarily developed dragon to go into heat. 
She notes that although the boy, though not fully developed, in the future, if he were to encounter bad people, the consequences from it would be unimaginable. Xiao Bai himself deliberately encourages Xi to touch his horns, saying that no one has ever refused to do so. At the same time, Xiao keeps telling himself that Xi will become his woman. However, Xi doesn't give in to the mischievous boy's provocations at all. She quickly covers his head with a rag. At this moment, Xiao Bai frustratedly wonders if he still hasn't conquered Xi. The girl calmly explains to Xiao that this is not the right thing to do, and he should hide his horns, not show or let anyone touch them if he doesn't want to be victimized by human traffickers. Xi's words surprise the boy. Xiao says that he is far from stupid and only showed the girl his horns because he considers her his. Otherwise, he wouldn't have shown the girl his horns. In his thoughts, Xiao wonders why Xi didn't come to talk him into it. When the girl gets out of bed and rummages through the nightstand without any interest in him, Xiao gets angry. Trying to draw attention to himself, the boy tells Xi to forget his earlier words about pampering and stands up, picking up a broom with the words that he will sweep up after the girl on his own. Xi tries not to give away her emotions and still stands with her back to the kid, but you can see from her face that she is embarrassed by Xiao's words. After a few moments, Xi calls the boy over and hugs him, making him blush. Zi once again earnestly asks Xiao not to show his horns and makes him promise not to show his horns even to those he trusts. Otherwise, Zi promises to never speak to him again. Xiao is not happy about the lecture, but agrees to Xi's terms. The girl asks if his father has the same horns, to which Xiao proudly declares that his father doesn't have them and that his mother gave him the horns. These words alarm Xi, and she begins to ask the boy where his mom is. Xiao says his uncle is sure his mom is dead, but his dad says she just left town. Xiao goes on to say that he doesn't miss her at all. In fact, he hates his mother and thinks she's a bastard who just abandoned his son because she didn't need him. Zi begins to think that Xiao's mother is dead. Xiao goes on to say that she hates her mother and thinks she was a bastard who just abandoned her son because she didn't need him. Zi begins to think that Xiao's mother is dead, but she encourages the baby by stroking his head. Si says there is no mom who doesn't need her baby. The girl says that mom probably misses him and had her reasons for leaving her son. Xiao blushes at those words. It is a beautiful sunny day outside. A flock of passing birds can be seen in the sky, flying quietly in search of shelter or food. The dining room of the mansion is already set for lunch. They had prepared a lot of delicious things for the inhabitants of the house, from roast meat to fresh fruit. Mo, Xiaobai, Ye Shen, and Xi are gathered at the dinner table. The boy keeps pestering Xi, calling her baby. Xi says she doesn't like the name because it has no uniqueness at all. Xiao then comes up with a new Jing Jing for her. The boy deliberately emphasizes that only he has the right to call Xi that. Mo and his brother watch the scene in silence. The conversation is interrupted by Ye Shen. He reminds Xi that she has been at their mansion for quite some time and asks when she will start helping his brother. Si Ming Jing was asked about her treatment plan, and her family has money, so they can treat her in the best way possible. The girl thought that the traditional treatment methods are too time-consuming and ineffective, and the trial period is only a week, so if she wants to stay, she has to take the risk. But then, she was asked a question, to which she replied that she was still thinking, thinking that the only thing that bothers her is that she doesn't really want to let Mo Yinhe touch her horns. The guy turned to the girl and said that if she couldn't prove herself in a week, they'd have to bring Sun's family here, and he asked her whether she realized it or not. Zi Ming Jing reports that Mr. Mo's illness has been delayed. The prescription she gave Mo three days ago was very effective, and after taking it, he will have a high fever, night sweats, and unbearable chills. But don't worry, it's just a three-day course of Chinese medicine, and after that, he will be able to just take injections and no medicine will be needed. To this, Mo replied, that he trusted her with his life and that he didn't have to worry about anything, just do it. What she has to do, she had a new thought at those words, she thought, that this man is really quite attractive and it's no wonder that Song Pinglan and a billion blue star girls like him, Mo was talking about the fact Mrs. Shi told him that he would have a high fever and chills after the medicine. But then his brother came up to him, handed him a cup of hot tea, 
and asked him how he was feeling and found out that he was fine, the guy said. So his brother would rest and he would go. Only his brother was getting worse. Ye Shen called Mrs. Shi Ming Jing to follow him. Holding her hand, he called her to his brother's room. He said, It's getting worse. He's not himself because of the cold. He's shivering and his limbs are icy cold. He asked her to do something to help his brother. He asked her to do something to help his brother, who was very quiet and broken, complaining of cold. But she said she could not do anything, because the medicine should work that way and no other way. But he only screamed harder and literally begged her to find some other way out. He also told her that his brother was waiting for his sister-in-law to return and did not want her to become a widow. That his brother was waiting for his sister-in-law to return and did not want her to become a widow. Ye Shen even knelt down and kneeled down and begged Mrs. Shi. He had forsaken any pride and begged the girl because his brother had turned so pale that he resembled a ghost. His skin was too light. But the girl thought to herself that there was something beautiful in it all. But only she does not fully understand what it is if she is a pervert. After such thoughts, the girl asked the guy to leave. She didn't want a stranger in the room until the end of the procedure. Afterwards, Ye Shen thanked her and said that he trusted her and trusted her with his brother. Zi Mingjing grows her horns and lengthens her ears. Now she looks more like an elf with horns. She knows it's the only thing she can do now, and she just needs to put a little pressure on the guy, and everything should be fine. But don't let him wake up, or she'll kill him. The thing is that the dragon's heat can dispel all the cold. If she transferred her body heat to Mo Yin He, she could alleviate the side effects of the medicine. The girl saw the guy no longer shivering so much from the cold. Like he was shivering before, now he is warm, and it seems her way worked. The guy suddenly called her baby and hugged her tightly, pressing her against him, making her very embarrassed and blushing. She obviously did not expect such a reaction nor such utterances. The guy said, baby don't go away. Shi Ming Jing was even more embarrassed. She didn't understand what kind of baby she was, and she didn't understand what kind of address he was using, while the guy accidentally touched her horns, which she didn't like, and then held the girl even more tightly to him. The guy keeps asking her not to leave him, but Zi Ming Jing is not happy about it. She thinks that he probably thinks she is Xiao Bai's mom, or maybe it's because they are the same race. The girl began to resist and bit the guy, after which she began to distance herself from him, but it was not to be. The guy grabbed her hand sharply, but that only caused Zi Ming Jing to feel even more negative emotions, and she asked him to let her go, because she was not his child at all. The guy even cried and started begging her with tears on his cheeks not to leave. He looks like a little kid who doesn't want to let his mom go. Only Zi Ming Jing is not interested in his games. She removes her hand from the strong embrace of the guy and pushing his hand away from him, saying she needs a cold shower and that after the second growth, horns really cannot touch. Zi Ming Jing can't sleep at all. She remembers the events of today, she thinks. That it was crazy and realizes that it was a mistake to use that ability. The girl blushed even more as she recalled the moment. When the guy wrapped his arms around her and hugged her tightly, the girl takes a shower to get away from these thoughts. But she can't, she thinks. She thinks she is crazy to let him touch her horns, and she can't get rid of these emotions and feelings, which makes Zhi Ming Jing very angry and annoyed. The boy told his brother that he had been near his bedroom until morning, and there was no woman there, which was probably a symptom of his fever, and he thought to himself that it would be terrible. If his brother found out that Miss Su had approached him, but his brother only asked, Is he sure of what he's saying? The guy undresses his shirt a little and asks his brother who bit him. Did he? To which the brother tries to get out of it, saying it was an accident and everything. Except the guy's already realized that his sister-in-law came by last night, her scent is everywhere. The guy's excited, saying it's the same smell, while his brother doesn't understand him at all. The boy explains that it's the dragon's hormone. When she's in the mood, she gives off this scent. It's cold and fresh like a red plum in the snow, so there's no mistaking it. She's back. Mo Yinhe chases Ye Shen out of the room. The latter grumbles but obediently leaves the room. Shi Mingjing wakes up early in the morning to an unexpected call on her phone. She is informed that she needs to apply for a new ID card, and if she doesn't, she will be illegally detained. This news shocks her, 
and she begins to realize the gravity of the situation. Only Sun Tenfei, her birth father, could confirm her identity. The only way to solve this problem was to convince her birth father, Sun Tenfei, to confirm her identity. Shi Mingjing was offered a paternity test, which could be the key to her salvation. If the test confirmed parentage, she could transfer her account to the Song family's villa and finally apply for an identity card. Shi Mingjing looked down and began to reflect on the events. Her mind was filled with memories of the villa that was her mother's pre-marital property. This precious house had been her mother's dream, but unfortunately, it had been taken over by the Song family. The rising sun illuminated Shi Mingjing, and at this moment, she couldn't help but think of how her mother had passed away in a cold and gloomy prison. These thoughts filled her heart with bitterness and determination to uncover the secrets of the past to regain her lost dignity. Shi Mingjing hesitated for a moment. After her mom was imprisoned, Sun's family had taken in another woman and had a daughter. Shi Mingjing reflects on the fact that a child from the Song family is getting an excellent education and even attends the same school as Xiao Bai. Xi Mingjing couldn't contain her emotions and suddenly grabbed her head with both hands. Her eyes read panic and she seemed to be screaming, but silently, as if an inner storm was playing out within her. Shi Mingjing remembered her mother's words, Your father is not Song Ten Fei. The thought overwhelmed her, and she realized that the Song family would probably never recognize her as their daughter or provide her with an identity card, let alone property rights. Shi Mingjing realized that she would have to find a way to prove her kinship to Song Ten Fei and regain her lost place in the family. The butler approached the table and announced Miss C's intention of opening an account in the name of the villa and obtaining a certificate of ownership. And the grandfather of the Sun family announced that a government official was going to open an account for Miss C and added that it was necessary to have property in the capital to do so. The butler continued, but his words could not be heard. Song Pinglan suddenly stood up from her chair and became angry, hitting the table forcefully with her hands. She then started shouting, expressing her annoyance that this little thing Shi Mingjing had appeared here. Song Pinglan slaps the table and screams, expressing her anger. She is annoyed that Shi Mingjing's mother, according to her, stole her fame in her lifetime and is now trying to take everything from her. Fang Jing agrees with Pinglan. Fang Jing asks Sun Tenfei why he should help Shi Mingjing. Song Pinglan emphasized her displeasure by saying that if the bitch was unhealthy, then her puppies were abnormal as well, and she claimed that Shi Mingjing resembled her mother. The grandfather of the Song family told everyone to shut up by striking the floor with his cane. He turned to Song Tenfei and questioned him about whether Si Mingjing was his daughter. Song Tenfei is frightenedly silent, and his face is covered in sweat. Song Pinglin got up from her chair and expressed doubt about how Shi Mingjing could be Tenfei's daughter, claiming that Shi Yao was sentenced to death five years ago and sent to prison. She asked how she could have given birth to a 20-year-old daughter after five years. Fan Jing began to ponder the situation. She realized that one year on the blue planet was equivalent to four years on the prison planet. Fang Jing concluded that by comparing the dates, Shi Mingjing could be Ten Fei's daughter. Fan Jing emphasized the need for caution in the future and that Shi Mingjing should not be allowed to get a share of the Song family's property. The butler announced that the guests were already here. The butler greets Shi Minjin. She says hello. She says she came to join the family conversation. Sun Ping Lan kicks her foot on the floor with rage. She says that Zi Mingjing is completely out of her mind. That she is, according to Song Ping Lan, trying to get into the Song family by faking her identity. Zi Mingjing says that the paternity test will show whether she is really trying to fake her identity or whether she is really part of the Song family. A young red-haired guy in a suit walks into the room after Shi Minjin. He brought with him the latest DNA testing machine. According to him, the results will be ready in a few seconds. He smiles and asks for cooperation and hair samples for DNA analysis. Shi Minjin holds out a pair of his hair for analysis. The red-haired guy asks Mr. Soon to cooperate with him, since Miss C has been living in prison for 20 years without being an inmate, and this is causing a big controversy in the media. Soon. Tenfei's face is covered with sweat. He realizes how this could end up for him, 
The guy reminds Tenfei that the government should give the public and Miss Shi an explanation, and it would be stupid of Tenfei not to cooperate with the government at this moment. Sun Tenfei gives up and holds out a hair to the red-haired guy with a trembling hand. The redhead thanks him, puts the hair samples into the DNA testing machine, and starts it up. The machine confirms paternity, and Sun's family is shocked. Si Minjin laughs and says that from the looks of it, Sun's family will have to add her to the family tree. Song Pinglan is indignant. Fang Jing slaps the table and says at Song Tenfei that it's all his fault. Since Shi Ming Jing was born from Shi Yao, she is half of Song's family. Song Tenfei grabs his hands on his head, covering his ears. He closes his eyes and asks her to stop. He's had enough. Si Minjin strokes Sun Yaya's head and says that she has very pretty ponytails on her head. Sun Yaya agrees with Si Minjin, says goodbye and leaves, finishing her ice cream. Shi Minjin lowers her gaze down and looks at her fist. She opens it, smiles and looks at Sun Yaya's hair that she managed to reach while stroking her head. Si Minjin tells Sun Tenfei that his settlement book is ready, and she's done what she can. Vertical bar, vertical bar, Sun Tenfei reminds him that in Blue Star, once a child reaches 18, the parents don't have to support them. Sun Tenfei covers her eyes and waves her hand away, saying that if Si Minjin has everything, she can go. Shi Mingjin smiles and thanks Sun Tenfei, calling him daddy. Zi Minjin says that it's almost dinner time and she should go, as it's very uncool to keep the Ye family waiting. Sun Tenfei is at a loss. He asks what she is talking about. Zi Minjin laughs and replies that the Ye family's son has fallen in love with her and invited her to have dinner at his house. Sun Tenfei is shocked to hear this. He asks if what is being written on the internet is true and if Mo Yinhei really wants to marry Zi Minjing. Si Mingjing thought about it. She thinks that businessman Sun Tenfei's face is quite ugly. Shi Mingjing thinks that he is going to become Mo Yinhe's father-in-law if she marries him. Shi Mingjing decides to disappoint him so he doesn't even dream of it. She tells Tenfei that of course none of this is true and it's just childish gossip. However, the elderly Mrs. Ye has taken a liking to her, and the latter has told Shi Mingjing that she wants to introduce her to someone. Shi Mingjing suddenly stops talking, as if the words are stuck in her throat, and asks her to forget everything she said and leaves. Fang Jing overtakes Shi Mingjing and blocks her way. She begs her to stop and tell them everything. Sun Tenfei agrees with her and asks Shi Mingjing for clarity. Shi Mingjing closes her eyes, sighs, and says that Mrs. Ye said that her family has never been threatened. But this time, the Song family has overstepped their bounds. Shi Mingjing accuses them of taking over the Ye family's property, and they are acting immorally. She smirks evilly and promises to bankrupt the Song family in three seconds, and suggests they forget about sleeping peacefully as well. The Sun family is shocked to hear this. Song Tengfei blames Song Pinglan. According to him, everything happened because of her stupid idea to force Ye family to marry her because of the stupid disease treatment. Song Pinglan is confused. She has nothing to say. Shi Mingjing puts her hand on Song Tenfei's shoulder and asks him not to disturb the peace. She leans into his ear and whispers that the elderly Lady Ye wants to give Shi Mingjing a chance to redeem herself for saving the Ye family's children. Besides, the Ye family wants Shi Mingjing to cure Mo Yinhe. Shi Mingjing explains if she can cure him, they can forget about the debt. If not, they will have to deal with the Ye family. Song Tenfei is drenched in sweat and trembling but he suddenly gathers his thoughts, removes Ji Mingjing's hand, and resolutely replies that she doesn't even know what she's talking about. He claims that Ji Mingjing can't cure Mo Yinhe. He asks her not to try to deceive them. Shi Mingjing says that they will have to try harder since the Sun family was founded by her grandfather and her mother. She argues that this is the point of no return, and Shi Mingjing as a member of their family can't just stand by and watch. Song Pinglan pushes her in the chest and tells her that it's all impossible and it's bullshit. How can Shi Mingjing, a brat, be able to cure family member E? Song Pinglan calls her a liar. She that Shi Mingjing just wants to take advantage of the situation and it's just disgusting. Song Pinglan clenches her fist. She says that if Song Pinglan hadn't gotten in her way, she would be the leading lady of the Ye family right now. Zi Mingjing can't stand it and punches her right cheek with her fist causing Song Pinglan to lose her balance and fall to the floor. Song Pinglan is shocked by this. She didn't expect this from Zi Mingjing. Zi Mingjing seems to be going crazy. A red aura appears around her. 
and her eyes look beastly as she starts running up to her screaming for her to stop and someone to calm her down. The girl is poked in the back of the neck, giving her an injection to calm her down. It's as if it makes the girl come to her senses. Her eyes have stopped back to their usual ones. Blue eyes, the color of the sky. Shi Mingjing began to publicly apologize that she had a seizure now, because she has an acute stress disorder. The inmates in prison abused her, and now when someone attacks her, she has a seizure, she continued to say. She warned that in the future she should not be approached with hostility, otherwise she might hurt them by mistake, and also said that she did not want to do anything like that, and thank them for stopping her. Only Song Ping Lan did not like it at all, and she shouted, calling the girl an obscene word, shouting that Shi Ming Jing must be faking, so she would tear her to pieces. An older man bursts into their conversation and orders them to stop arguing now and then turns to Ji Ming Jing, he said. He heard that the girl was going to treat Mo Yinhe and asked what medicine she had prescribed for him. The man looked at the prescription and said that the prescription was too strong. Ordinary people couldn't stand it. And then he asked in a raised tone, Why does a girl who doesn't know anything about medicine want to cure Mo Yinhe? Does she really think that her little knowledge will help the boy? Then he compared her to Song Pinglin. Saying that she couldn't compare to Pinglin at all, Sun Pinglin only smiled proudly and said, How could a woman from a prison planet compare to a medical student like her? Grandfather tore the prescription sheet and told Ji Mingjing to stop treating Mr. Mo Yinhe with his way. He would give her the prescription himself and let her follow it to cure Mo Yinhe. The girl asked the girl why she was so bad in his eyes. After all, on her prison planet she was praised by everyone and said that she believed in her formula anyway, and now she should go, since she promised Xiao Bai that she would pick him up after school. But this made the girl more annoyed. He believes that she is determined to destroy the Song family, so it's worth it to stop Mo Yinhe from using Shi Mingjing's recipe as soon as possible. But Sun Palan came over to him, put her hand on his phone and told Grandpa that they could wait. And anyway, why not wait? When he's not too weak to return to them for treatment, and then they will be Mo Yinhe's saviors, and no one will remember that they threatened him. It's a real way to redeem them now. But this surprised and shocked the man and the grandfather very much. The man stated, That Song Ping Lan was as if she had lost her mind. If something happened to Mo Yinhe in these three days, could Song's family afford to take the blame? But then the girl asked her brother what he meant by that. If he wants to give his share to Zi Ming Jing, even if she is his daughter, she is also Zi Yao's daughter and has half of the Z family's blood in her. The man agreed, because all of C's daughters are losers, so even if she dies, he won't care at all, he told the girl. He said that it was up to her, and the girl smiled and thanked him. Song Pinglan is full of hope and joy. She is happy because if everything goes well, then Mo Yinhe will think highly of the girl, and she will have a diamond ring from him. Song Pinglan imagines the guy puts a wedding ring on her finger and she is in a gorgeous, beautiful wedding dress. She is smug, beautiful, and so elegant, becomes the mistress of the E family home. The girl is drowning in her dreams, imagining how beautiful it would all look. Xiao Bai is saying goodbye to his friend who is being picked up by his mom from school. He looked around and saw her. The boy started pointing his finger at Shi Mingjin and telling everyone about what a wonderful woman he had and that she would pick him up from school, which meant he wouldn't be left unattended. Xiao Bai starts bragging to the other children that his woman is much better than all their moms, even all the moms put together, so she is so beautiful and stylish, which makes the other boys start to admire Zi Mingjin. The girl came closer to Xiao Bai and said it was time to go. She would take him home. He nodded his head in agreement and said he was ready to go home, and the children behind their backs began to gossip about what a great woman Xiao Bai had. Maybe some of them even envied him. In any case, Xi Mingjin did not share the children's joys, but she took great pleasure in taking care of Mr. Xiaobai's vanity. The girl approaches the building and is puzzled. She has no idea why so many cameras are so large. A guy comes up to her and says, That Miss C was crazy to bite his brother, and in such a place, his brother was so confused that he believed it was his sister-in-law, that it was his sister-in-law who bit him. And then the guy explains that these cameras are his brother's hope to catch his sister-in-law today. The girl said that she had no idea, that he was so stubborn and asked if he told Mr. Mo that it was her yesterday. 
But the guy only shouted loudly. Does she think he's crazy? He asked. Except for his sister-in-law, no woman is allowed in his brother's bedroom, and the fact that she was in the bedroom last night should not be revealed. Let the girl keep her mouth shut and at least try to say something unnecessary, Shi Ming Jing said. That there is no problem, but his brother is in poor health, and after the pills, he will be like last night. Without her, Mr. Mo would not have survived. But now there are a lot of cameras, and it will be very hard to avoid them, to which the guy told Miss Shi not to worry. He's smart, so he can do something about it. The guy went to the system with which he planned to turn off the cameras. The girl is not quite sure of this idea, but she takes his word for it, after which he emphasizes the fact that Miss C does not use his brother. Even if he looks very charming and attractive and like a magnet attracts her, let her try to restrain herself, while the girl laughed a little at these words, but agreed. She really didn't have such goals. In fact, Shi Ming Jing doesn't want to see him at all, not at all, but she has to. She went to the bed of the gentleman and saw that he was sleeping soundly and well. It is not surprising, for the girl adds so much sleeping pills to her Chinese medicines that it is possible to put even a cow or several cows to sleep. The girl bent over the gentleman's bed more strongly, thus examining him better. She tries to understand his condition. The girl realizes that she just needs to keep her hands to herself, as suddenly something happens that she didn't expect in any way. She saw a protective field that appeared to be protecting the Lord, but force field shields are so expensive that they are only used in spaceship defenses. But the girl is annoyed that Yin He is using this luxury item as a cage for her. She tapped her fist hard on the protective field to understand all its power, but she can't even open it. How crazy this Mo Yin He is! Si Ming Jing took the guy by the chin and said that she didn't expect such a thing from him. She didn't even realize that he was capable of such a thing. He made every effort to catch her, when suddenly, quite suddenly for her, the gentleman seized her by the arm and pressed her to him. Mi Yin He says that the girl can't run away now. He arrests her. While the girl was very shocked by this, she was too hopeful about the medicine, but realized that it was not strong enough, and Mr. Mo Yin He is not sleeping well. The girl knows he's still delusional, but at the same time she's still on top of him. So she knows. That and don't underestimate him. You should be ready for anything. The guy says that he knows it's her. He starts to open his eyes little by little, and the picture of the beautiful and plump lips of the girl is revealed to him. Mo Yin He stretches his hand forward to her lips, so that one finger touches her lips, and the other touches her delicate cheek. He also notices a part of her snow white strands that are visible on her shoulders right above her clothes. Mo Yin He holds the girl's cheek, saying how much he misses her, while Zi's eyes show a slight misunderstanding. She doesn't understand his behavior. She sharply denies it. She slightly raises her voice. She asks Mo Yin He why the hell he's letting himself behave like that with her and calls her a baby on top of calling her baby and spreading his hands around. She pushes his hand away and asks how dare he call her his lover. She is completely unemotional towards him. Rather than any joy, she thinks to herself that this is why she didn't want to come back here. She shouted for the guy to let her go, but he said that he didn't want to let her go and that she wouldn't leave him. The girl was ready to push him away, but it wasn't like that. The guy grabbed her by her clothes and threw her on the bed, so that she was under him. This made Zi Ming Jing blush very red with embarrassment. She feels embarrassed, red as a tomato from such an inappropriate behavior of the gentleman. The girl tries her best to keep herself in control and not give away her embarrassment. She asked the guy to let her go, but he only squeezed her hand more tightly while leaning towards her harder. Mo Yin He said that he had waited for her for five years, after which he repeated that it had been five years. Five years of waiting, and here she was, even if it was a dream, the guy continued to say. Even if it was, he would never let her go, never again. He would hold her hands tightly. After saying that, the guy pressed himself harder against the girl's body and even put his lips on her ear. While she turned away slightly, Trying not to give away her very strong embarrassment, she even lost her speech at the guy's behavior. The guy started to ask the girl to stay with him. The guy pressed the girl even harder to the bed, making her feel even more uncomfortable. Then he, again calling her baby, says that he wants to look at her more closely, because he has already missed her so much. But from those words, the girl's eyes even changed, became more dragon-like, 
such a rich, bright amber eye color. The girl realizes that the effect of the medicine will soon wear off, and it will be very bad for her. She has no time to play with Mo Yinhi, because if he realizes that he is hugging the wrong person, it will end in disaster. While the girl was thinking about it, he continued to call her baby, standing over her body. But then the girl could not stand it and shouted that his baby was cursed. Suddenly the girl was frightened that he had already come to his senses. She was right. He realized that he was hugging the wrong person. Then the guy began to shout Shi Mi Jing about how she was here and what she was doing. He began not feeling any pity to strangle the girl, telling her to get out of here because here she does not belong and here no one is not happy with her. The girl thinks to herself that Mo Yinhe will definitely break her neck and kick her out of her house, and then contact Sun's family and hand her over to Sun Pinglin to be tortured. As suddenly the guy started calling C his baby again and started climbing up to kiss her, this caused a very brown reaction in the girl, and she screamed, not realizing what was even going on with him like that. The girl keeps thinking that she will be punished, lose her job, and die. Suddenly she noticed that Mr. Mo's lips were coming closer and closer to hers, and his body was pressed even more tightly against hers. She couldn't even push him away because he was pressing his whole weight on her. She was red as a tomato again, and the only thing she realized was that she had to avoid this kiss, because it was her first kiss. It shouldn't happen under such circumstances and with such a person, but suddenly the girl had a brilliant and perhaps the only idea that could save her. She realizes that she is running out of time, as his lips are almost pressed against hers. And then she decides to turn into an animal, a cute white animal with horns and ears like a hare. While her tail is more like a smaller version of a dragon's tail, she has turned into an animal because Mr. Mo Yinhei has forced her to become one. The beast clung to the gentleman with her front paws. Si thought to herself that she would have to take harsh measures. Now he does not recognize her and therefore it is necessary to make him disable his power barrier. But then suddenly she looked at the guy and realized that he still sees her as his baby, even calls her by the same name. He has not changed his attitude towards her, seeing her as his real baby. She had no idea how this was possible. He should be better, but he still calls her baby. What's wrong with him? But her thoughts were interrupted by the guy saying he loves her, which shocked she even more. She thought that maybe Xiaobai's mother looked exactly like her. It seems like it, but dragons should be different from each other. The girl in animal form pointed her paw at the protective barrier and asked him to open it, to which the guy only grinned and said that his baby was locked up. And the girl got angry and told him to open it because she was hungry. But then the guy was not confused and told his pet not to worry about anything, because under the bed there is everything she could think of and everything she wants. He pulls out a bag from under the bed. It is full of various sweets, various delicious food and drinks, chocolates. The guy says that he knows the girl best, but this overflowing bag again shocked the girl. She realizes that with such a huge stockpile cannot leave the house at all. He hugs the animal and asks it to be good and not to run away from him again. While this tactility and love for the animal frightens Z, she thinks there is something wrong with him. She looks at Mo Yinhe with a disgruntled look not sharing his views on the situation. The only thing she has realized so far is that her transformation into a pet has only saved her from being suddenly kissed by her master. But it doesn't help her in the future because Mo continues to see her as his child, and that's not normal at all.